Welcome everyone, Monday Talk Time. It is so cool to be in front of you. This is take number five. <laughs> and the reason why this is take five is I started Monday Talk and I had like, my phone was like, I, th I thought it was gonna levitate. It was buzzing and it's on silent, but I could see something. I'm like, I thought someone, I don't know. I thought someone had died and uh, I, yeah, anyway. But they all knew that Monday Talk was on and I wasn't gonna answer. So unfortunately I had to, but here we go. We're starting again. I want to welcome you all to Mata Talk, and I'm going to show you something incredible. Quite a bit. Look at this. This is for those who may not know. What is my, what is Panettone? Why do I keep going on about Panettone? Only because it is the greatest Christmas cake there is. Italian, and you know why? Also, because I grew up with it, uh, and so so many. You know, like like all of us. So many beautiful things are linked to, well, hopefully, are linked to our childhood and, uh, you know, um, traditions and things of that nature. And this is one for me. It was Christmas time and Panettone would be out and about. And pff, I mean, if I could eat a whole cake, which I do these days, <laughs> but I wasn't allowed to as a child, um, then I would. Uh, so now this one here was brought to me by the Vietnamese Santa Claus. He actually announced himself. He knocked on the office and then he ho 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 himself in, which that sounds weird, I know. Uh, and uh, he brought this beautiful panettone. It's made by a, a local, so Melbourneites. I'm giving you a heads up, all right? I'm, I'm telling you this for your sake. It's called Artisanal Bakery. It's in Bentley. Here's the address. You gotta go here. I mean, I love eating panettones that come in from Italy. The truth is they're not freshly baked. These guys bake on a daily basis. Sometimes you go and they're not there because they've run out and they like, I'm sorry, I, th I think they bake like on a weekly or every three days or something like that. Uh, incredible panettone. Now what makes an incredible panettone? And thank you Christmas, uh, Vietnamese Christmas Santa Claus or Vietnamese Santa Claus. Uh, what makes a beautiful panettone? It's this beautiful balance between the cake, but also the fluffiness of the actual panettone. Almost like as when, when it's freshly cut, it, it's kind of gooey and melts a little bit. Um, it's chewy. It's just gorgeous. It, and the smell of it is divine. As, as I'm talking to you, the, the smell of this. What also makes an incredible panettone is the crust, the sugary crust. But these guys here have, I think there's almond meal or something like that. It has an almondy kind of flavor to it. It's kind of milky also in its texture. It's beautiful. And the last part is the importance of, if you don't like dried fruits, you're in trouble here. There is quite a bit of a, a number of dried fruits, in particular orange peel. But for me, this is like heaven. And the difference with this is that sometimes the, on the other panettones, they tend to be a little bit on the hard side. This is, I'm going to say these were hand cut. These were hand prepared. I'd be surprised if they bought this. Uh, anyway, just bada bing, the most amazing panettone. I'm gonna push it away from me. I don't wanna smell it, I'll get distracted. And here we go. All right, so, mm, that's yummy. Oh, um, so I wanna point out to Harold. This is Harold here. He sent me the Glanenser, Glanenser, Glanenser. Um, so it's a traditional, he made a point of this. It's a Swedish, it's Swedish origin, but the uh, it's a big deal in Denmark. A lot of Danishes eat it. I went to a place called Danish Nosh. Nosh, I'm guessing means food, eat. So I figured Danish food, bada bing. No, uh, they don't do, <laughs> it's not a Danish place. Um, they they don't do they, the, the clan and sir. Um, and so, but I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna try to find, there's gotta be a place in Melbourne that sells this for sure. Anyway, so Harold, Hang tight, I will look for this. This also made me think, wouldn't it be cool? I, I enjoy it, I've been enjoying, I enjoy food. Nice food, I'm all in. Uh, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool to do, rather than um, just Christmas, let's open it up to the rest of the world. There's Ramadan, there is Diwali, uh, Chinese New Year's coming up. I'm guessing that there's some treatings for, uh, for each of these particular um, special events. So let me know, as these events start to come up on the calendar, Tell me what is it that you enjoy as your treatings for these events. Our, uh, Melbourne is like the mini world. We have enclaves of all these different nationalities all across Melbourne. So I'll go hunt down. I'll hunt down, I'll look for these things and we'll, uh, we'll share it with the world. I'll, I'll share it, I'll, I'll do a, like a, so yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Is what I'm saying is that, and again, uh, Thanos, I found the right one. If, you know, if I can find a fresh one, 
then we are all good. I'm gonna keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. All right, so now I mentioned to you about the incredible Vietnamese Santa Claus. He's also known as the Vietnamese Batman. Boom. We've become really good friends. And this is, you know, I, I love that, um, those movies were like uh, soulmates, but and, and I know that the movies make them out romantic. We're not in a romantic relationship, Kevin and I. Uh, but we are soulmates. We 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 just soul friends. There you go. So that doesn't get sort of weird. Um, otherwise, my wife and his fiance will go, "What is going on?" Um, so we've become like soul friends, and we just know each other. We just it's like we've known each other all our life. We've only known each other for two years. Two years. Two years. And it's been through the, I guess my connection, not my guess, it's been through the connection of Oligarch. We created some videos together. It, um, so I'm just looking, my, making my shot is good. Created some videos together and we've just connected. Now we've created a business together called KM Fragrance Tours. This is our Instagram. Look at this little baby number. Um, so it's brand new. So um, we've just launched the, the, the um, Instagram account. I would like to invite you guys to follow this account, please. We would like to get these numbers moving forward. Now, why would you want to do that? Uh, so at the moment, we are focusing on fragrance tours in France. We did one this year in September. It was a great success. It was a lot of fun. We're doing one in uh, September next year. It's also going to be, I mean, we, we, we're going it's almost like we're doing bigger and better. We're staying, we're going to Paris, an area called Clermont Ferrand, and then in Grasse. In Clermont Ferrand, we are staying in a chateau. We've fully booked this place out. Have a look at this place. I mean, come on. Uh, we are going with a perfumer called Pierre Guillaume. Now, what we're trying to do with the fragrance tours is create unique, bespoke events that you just can't walk into. So yes, you can walk into a, in, in Pierre's case, a Pierre Guillaume boutique, you can buy his, his fragrances, but in the tour, we're gonna do a masterclass with Pierre. So we'll, we're actually gonna be narrated by the creator himself. And then we're gonna be in his atelier in Clermont Ferrand, and we will do something that is quite exclusive. We're working on this right now, but it's gonna be something that well, it's just not an everyday event. This is something that's going to be very unique and this is what we want to do. Kevin and I, we want to create bespoke experiences for those who love all things niche perfumery. Now, back to, we'd love you to follow the, uh, the, uh, the Instagram account because we're also creating a number of other bespoke events. For those who saw the, um, uh, the evening at Oligarch that we did, Here's the thumbnail, you can have a look at that. So we, at the last minute, this was originally designed to be for Australia only, and I had a lot of requests saying, you know, would it be possible to open this up to the world? And we thought, why are we not opening this up to the world? So we did, and it was a grand success. We had people from across the world all join us in this live session. We did film it, you can see all the, the different camera angles. We had two uh, subscribers in the actual um, store with us, which was, was a lot of fun, you know, sort of the banter between Kevin and I, but also included these other individuals who are also passionate about all things niche perfumery. And we also opened up the mic so we could hear everybody in real time sharing their views or their thoughts on the fragrances that we were experiencing. Now we're gonna be doing one of these in probably in another two or three months. We're actually in progress right now with a superior and exquisite brand. Wait till you sh we tell you who that is. So, it, through KM, through the Instagram account, we'll be announcing these sort of things. So the, the idea is that we want to make sure that there is something for everybody. So if you want to do a grand, bespoke, very luxe experience, then yeah, come with us to, uh, to France and, and you'll experience something Michelin star dining, staying in chateaus and stuff like that. So that's designed for, uh, for, uh, for that. But if you wanna just be chill, stay home, and still enjoy some incredible fragrances, that, so we're, we're, we're trying to create a level of, of so many different layers so that people can join us at, at different levels that they're at. We also will be doing, uh, we're also in the progress right now to create a uh, in-person experience in Melbourne. I won't share too much because I don't wanna steal my own thunder, but an in-person experience in Melbourne that will be something different. I haven't seen this before. And also we will go to Sydney and we'll do it there too. So. Going back to the beginning, would love you to uh, 
follow the account and have a look at the different things that we'll be doing. It all targeted towards bespoke experiences around niche perfumery. Boom, bada boom. All right, I'm gonna have a small drink. Sam, I know you tell me, don't excuse myself, but I feel compelled to say, excuse me while I have a small drink. It also gives me a chance to have a look at my notes. Wow, I've moved through there really fast. Like I said, this is my fifth take, so now I'm like, boom, moving through the stuff. Okay, so what I wanna to do today is, I'd like to talk about, I mentioned before that uh, I've been focusing a lot on the Christmas treatings and things of that nature. So I wanted to have fragrances that you would wear at Christmas. So when you go to a uh, family gathering or a work do or whatever it may be, surrounding around Christmas, there's a lot of things that, especially in Australia, surrounding the, the celebration of Christmas. Having said that, if you don't celebrate Christmas in the different parts of the world that you're in, all cool because these can be deemed as special event uh, fragrances or if you're going to a wedding or if you're going to a work function or something that you want to elevate. You want to create a scent, you know, bubble. You want to create some sort of presence in a, in a different way. Then I want to put forward these particular fragrances. I've broken up into, into different categories depending on what you like. Now, men or women. So there are actually all of these in front of me, both Sandra and I are constantly wearing. There's one that took my eye, that caught my eye that Sandra cannot get enough of. All right. So just to give you an idea, men or women, you can all enjoy these particular fragrances. This is not really, so I'm not going to say they're, you know, men or women, boom. That, that's, that's what we're trying to say. Let me begin with, so I also understand the, the I guess the only difference is that at this period of time, and, and if I am looking at Christmas as our, our event that we're going to, Northern Hemisphere, you guys are in winter, uh, everybody, you know, we've watched a lot of movies and it's all about white Christmases, you know, so snow Australia, there is no such thing as a white Christmas. Although Melbourne at this moment in time is being a little bit uh, interesting, I wouldn't be surprised. Let me just say that we had one day where we're literally having all four seasons in the same day, which is not unusual for Melbourne. But if I wake up to a white Christmas, I'm not gonna be surprised. At the moment, Melbourne is being weird on us. So if you are having a white Christmas and you, it is quite cold, I'm gonna give you two gourmand warm style fragrances that I think will just be pure magic. Both of these, pure magic over this period of time. The very first one, and I think I should start with this, is none other than Starlight. I think this fragrance is gorgeous, but my mom is frustrating when my camera just dies. I don't know why it does that. Anyway, clearly I need to ask Santa Claus for a new camera. Um, Starlight. So I have been speaking quite a bit about this particular fragrance. I did the amber video. I also did a two minute breakdown on this fragrance. This is for me the one of the most perfect uh, fragrances for Christmas. So if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, I don't recommend it for us Aussies or, or anything down this end of the world. Uh, I think it will just be a little bit too... Uh, the ambery components of it is is really designed for uh, cooler weather, winter weather. But this is just incredible. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, if it is cold, this radiates even more. There is a warmth in here. People who have been uh, because of these two videos, I've been getting messages saying, I went out and tested, I got a sample, uh, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, where have you been all my life? So really, as a winter special event fragrance uh, over cooler weather, Starlight is exceptional. The key, or I think the magic for me, is that cardamom, look, this is the wild part. It has cardamom, has clove, and for me, both of those notes can be a little bit, um, I find them, not offensive, but they I, I can detect them really quickly and I'm a little bit like Bleh. Um Whereas in here, there is this ambery, milky component to it. I think there is almond milk within that construct. It's it's sublime. It really is it, pure magic. Uh, pure magic. Uh, I, I, in the video, I joke that, that uh, angels, uh, when they come to Earth, they're actually wearing starlight and it creates a sense of peace and a sense of just calm uh, in, in its same profile. And, and that's the absolute truth. There is a sense of peace when you're wearing this fragrance. I don't know, the, it just radiates just a glorious aura. It's, it's incredible, beautiful fragrance. The other one that I would recommend to you is, and I was wearing this yesterday, as I mentioned earlier, Melbourne has been weird. I mean, we, 
I love that the the rest of the country always likes to joke. You know, oh, you're from Melbourne, and like, oh, you have four seasons in one day. Ha ha ha. Yeah, we know that. I mean, you're stating the obvious. Yeah, this is Melbourne. So if you go out in Melbourne, you always have to bring a jacket, wear a t-shirt, and then bring an umbrella. And it, you, in the day, you will be using all three of those those three elements. And it's for us, it's like, yeah, no worries. Oh, it's raining now, boom, umbrella. Oh, gee, it's a bit cold, yeah, let's put the jacket on, you know? Oh, wow, and it's getting hot now. Take the jacket off and carry the umbrella. That's Melbourne, all right? It, that's, <laughs> it, it is what it is. So I was wearing this the other day. It was in the morning, it was cold. And I was wearing this and it was glorious. So this is Clive Christian E. I have spoken about this before. I did an mm, baby, what's your name with Carolina. And this was her choice. This is, so have a look at this. She blind smelled this, and this is her choice for cooler, cold weather. Actually talking about, mm, baby, what's your name? Have a look at this. Fragrance Collector, and we're doing the episode that I love, which is the, mm, baby, what's your name? But how would you guys say it? I mean, you guys wouldn't say it like that. How would you say it? Um, I thought we established this. <laughs> we're doing the same thing? We're doing the same thing. Oh. <laughs> if we were at a festival right. or a party, You'd say, oi mate. Oi mate, what's, what's your, your name? name? That's the Aussie way of doing it. These are my talented editors. These are the editors that uh, work alongside me in the business. We've done uh, mm, Baby What's Your Name and this will be released next year. So this is, uh, we're getting ready for um, yeah, the, the work next year. Uh, so look out for that. This is, it's, it was a lot of fun uh, working with the girls on this particular production here. Anyway, wearing this yesterday, Spectacular, glorious, cool weather, it was cold, it was just, this also has a clove note, but it's now wrapped around like a maple syrup, not caramel, it's definitely sweet maple syrup like, it has this sugariness component, not brown sugar either, it's, it's actually quite unique. The, 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 the projection on this, the, the sillage, the longevity. I woke up this morning, actually my brain was, I was half asleep and my brain is going, what am I smelling? And, and it took me a while to go, I can smell a beautiful perfume, but I, I couldn't register. My brain was like, what did I wear yesterday? I can't remember. I'm thinking, thinking, and, and I'm trying to define what is it that I'm smelling? And there's like, there's a floral sweetness in there. It has, it has like a, um, like a spice that I'm not familiar with. Eventually my brain sort of you know, caught up with me. Clive Christian E. This is more than 24 hours later, all right? So, actually no, it was less than 24 hours later. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, yeah, anyway. 24 hours plus, all right. Um, I caught up with my nephew, so the aromatic kid is back. So we'll be doing some, uh, some stuff with, uh, with Josh again. He jumped into the car and he's like, uncle, you smell amazing. What, what are you wearing? His brother was with me and actually his brother, I shouldn't film with Harry. I call him Has Dog. The, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a young, cool kid. Actually, he will destroy you. Let me just put it out. This boy is strong. Anyway, uh, he started, mm, I can smell clove. I'm smelling like a honey note. So as a projecting, as a longevity, as a fragrance that is perfect for cool weather, and for warming your soul and warming, you know, just creating a beautiful scent cloud, Clive Christian E is, is just glorious. Just an incredible, incredible fragrance. Big recommendation. Boom, so that's for the cooler weather. So now let's move across to more sunshine. Okay, so for us in the Southern Hemisphere, and who knows what's gonna happen in Melbourne. So if you're in Melbourne, these could probably work for you in that Christmas time. Actually, I've got one for you that will work perfectly. If, even if it is a bit cool. But if it's a warm day, let's now imagine that it's a glorious sunny day on Christmas day. And of course we're gonna be playing backyard cricket. Uh, and just to, let's settle this once and for all. If you hit it over the fence, it's six and out. I don't care what happened, I don't care which fence it is. Over the fence, six and out, all right? So no more discussion on this. Um, radical Rose. I would, uh, and so, uh, for women, it's easy in the sense that the women have always had florals in their fragrances. It's sort of from a marketing point of view, it's always been pointing in that direction, you know, floral this, floral or that. And you think, oh yeah, it's a female leaning fragrance. All right, boys are a little bit more reluctant because like, whoa, florals. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm scared of that. Stop. This is incredible. So if you want a really good, um, if you're, uh, as a man, not had a lot of florals in your fragrances, then I would start with Radical Rose. One thing that I would say to you, and I say this to everybody, if you're going to a special event, so in this case Christmas or whatever, work function, 
don't wear an aromatic or dry wood fragrance. Everybody is wearing them. So all other men well, are gonna be wearing some kind of aromatic, some kind of uh, dry wood fragrance. You wanna stand out a little bit more, and I would say that the one that will create that, that sense of aura about you is Radical Rose. The rose note is uh, discernible, so you can detect that it's a rose fragrance. However, it's so beautifully blended with all these other components. One of them in particular is a, um, and the way that, that Mattia Premier has defined it is a, a red pepper berry or berry pepper, something like that, but it does use the word berry. And the idea behind it is that there is a fruit-like sweetness to it. So it, it just has a peppery, but not pronounced like a black pepper or, or spicy component to it. It has more of a sweet berry-like component to it, but not to the same level of a, a raspberry or an actual fruit itself. Incredible. I wore this the other day, so yes, it was a typical Melbourne day, and, and this actually happened. We went out, it was an outdoor picnic, we were getting together with friends. Uh, it, on this day, I knew it was gonna be sunny in the end. It started off very cloudy, it did rain. Nobody moved, and this is the funny part. So we were all, fruit everywhere, began to rain. I looked around, nobody else was moving either. The rain stopped, like Melbourne had to sort of shake it off, all right, I feel better now. Uh, cloud came out again, oh sorry, uh, cloud was there, sun came out and it was, so throughout that process there, this fragrance is magical. So, it, but it shines better in beautiful sunshine, just that, it's a, it's a, it's an invigorating fragrance. There's a happiness to it in its scent profile. So Radical Rose, gentlemen, I strongly recommend. If you want another rose fragrance, another house that I love is Fuea. Actually, have a look at this photo. This is the incredible young lady that is Vera from Singapore. She'd been sending me messages saying, I'm going to Tokyo. I'm going to the Fuea store. Check it out. I mean, this is my happy place. <laughs> this is where I go to, to be happy. Uh, so this is the one in Tokyo. And uh, she mentioned that you know, she just enjoyed experiencing all things that is Foya. So another one that I would recommend from, from Foya, if you want something a little bit different. It's funny how they're, they're very similar in that, the, so the difference here is that it has a geranium. So it has a bit more greenness in the, the, the fragrance. The rose isn't as pronounced as a radical rose in my opinion, um, but it does have the pink pepper component to it. Actually, have a look at this photo. This is my little nephew. They live out, um, out towards Kalgoorlie, a uh, mining town, and he is into perfume. He came to the office, and when he saw the, the fragrance bar, he just, I, I thought he was gonna pass out. Anyway, so you can see him here, so I'm showing him <laughs> where to spray. I'm saying, well, I always recommend that you spray on your, your solar plex, on your stomach. So I had already sprayed perfume on him, and he's lifting up, I sprayed, Juan Manuel on him, and instantly he's like, oh, uncle, oh, he was doing all the yummy sounds. So, as a beautiful rose fragrance, Juan Manuel, or which is a little bit more accessible, I believe, or you can find it a bit easier, Radical Rose, both, are, but the rose is more pronounced here than here, just a heads up if you're a little bit reluctant. Now another one, let me just take a small drink. Excuse me, everybody. I know, Sam, I know, I know. This also gives me a chance to look at my notes. Yeah, all good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stay with flowers. Sorry, gents. Um, so this works incredible as a anybody fragrance, okay? And that's the none other than the glorious Dekas by Zerjov. This one here, so it's part of the 1861 lineup. Naxos, all the love. Renaissance, a little bit of love. Zafiro, people like, didn't, I didn't realize it was part of the collection. Yes, Zafiro is glorious, but it, now it's an incense fragrance. And so if you like incense, you'll love it. If you don't like incense, you're not gonna enjoy it. I'm just gonna give you a heads up. But one that everybody should enjoy. And for me, this is on par with Naxos. So really Naxos and Decas really should have the same podium together. They're just as glorious as each other, personally. The magic here is in between this incredible vibrant mandarin citrus note. It, it, it actually states it as mandarin from Calabria. It is sweet, it is inviting, it is uh, almost to the point of being juicy. There is a vanilla touch to it. There is incense in here. There's things like a Poppenax and a Benzoin, things of that nature, so there are some resins in there. But it's the tuberose that really creates this incredible scent. 
to the, to the fragrance. I think it's the tuberose that creates the magic to the fragrance. That's not the one. I'll tell you about this one in a minute. It's just incredible. So for Aussies, as a summer fragrance, so even if the weather is not, I mean, if it's full sun, it's gonna be glorious and radical rose, Juan Manuel, man, that's just exceptional. If it's gonna be kind of, you know, typical weird Melbourne weather or uh, yeah, not the bestest, then this is the one. Because that opening citrus note is just super, it's sunny, it's inviting, but then it does dry down to this floral, incense-like place. There is a vanilla touch to it, so it's not a heavy incense fragrance, so don't be afraid of that incense or the incense not in there. The citrus, the florals, and that slight uh, incense component, just a beautiful balance. I think also the incense brings back the florals on it, and so it doesn't become overtly tuberose. It's not a very strong tuberose fragrance, but the tuberose is definitely the crowning glory to this fragrance here. This would be amazing also Northern Hemisphere. So as an evening fragrance, um, I, I, if it's a really cold day, I don't recommend it, but as an evening fragrance, uh, it would just be just glorious sunshine in this cool place, nice fireplace, all that sort of stuff. Then this fragrance here would be bada bing, pure magic. Absolutely, boom, there it is. Okay, so now wrapping this baby up, I've got two more fragrances that I'd love to share. So we went to gourmand spicy notes with we, what we had there, then some florals in there if it's a bit more sunny. But let's say you're going to a, an event or a Christmas get together where it's not necessarily family, or it could be family, but there's opportunities to maybe find a romantic partner. So you want something now, <laughs> a romantic partner. You want something now that has some like, I don't know, not necessarily some musks. Musks have always been known to have, or these animalic components have always been known as a bit of a lure. You know, that occurs like that in nature. And so I know that as perfumers, they've also, or perfumers have been using that as a way to, to create a, like a, an olfactory lure, you know? Let me show you the, the, the one that is not so overtly um, lure-like, but has that beautiful, some animalics in there. Voyage à Paris. This is a new release from Fragrance du Bois. This is gorgeous. So if you haven't had a chance to uh, test this fragrance out, this is, and I love that it walks this beautiful balance between being a um, gourmand-esque sort of warm ambery fragrance, but with a little bit of animalics there because of the oud that's in the base. The oak, there's, a, there's an oak or cedar oak uh, component there, so the woody-like components to it. It does sit close to skin, so this is not a, a, a big push heavy fragrance where it'll command the room, but the moment someone comes in close to you, I'm, I'm telling you now, they will detect this fragrance, they will pick up the, the notes that are here, this beautiful blend between this rum that's in that opening, the vanilla that's in the base, and that slight oody touch that it has throughout the fragrance. I've been wearing it today. Actually, it's the fragrance I'm wearing today. I was wearing it tomorrow, yesterday? Was that, no, I, I, I layered this at the end, at the end of the day, because I wanted to get the, the end of vibe from it. Maybe this is what I was detecting yesterday, because there are some florals in here. Anyway, bottom line is gorgeous fragrance. This is superb, gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Voyage à Paris. I love saying the word, I love saying the name. Really nice. A slight, like I said, slight animalic. Uh, but mainly it's this beautiful gourmand component, but a, a, a beautiful balance between all those. Last one, last, well, two more, one more. This one here, there's mixed response. If you haven't seen the ad that, that uh, they created for this, don't. Just avoid it altogether. I mean, look at it because, you know, it's just whatever. But it, I think that that advert created the wrong impression on this fragrance. I'm, I'm actually building a, um, or creating a episode on this. Uh, we'll release it early next year. Uh, I have fallen in love with Sadonasso. Sadonasso for me is the most, and as I was preparing for today, I mean, how do I explain this fragrance? Because it's not a sensual fragrance, no. Um, it's not a sexy fragrance, definitely no. It is a, uh, it's like a sexual energy charged. I mean, it, it, so it's more than just sensual. I mean, if you want sensual, you would do the uh, Voyage à Paris. Um, you probably do, uh, not yeah, but a little bit of that. There's a bit of sensuality in that. Um, 
but this is sexually charged. There's something in here and, I, and there are some kind of, okay, so Alessandro, for those who not, don't know, Nasumato, Alessandro Galtieri is the perfumer, never reveals notes. You don't know what's actually in here. You make up your mind whether you like it or don't like it. Now, but as fragrance nerds uh, or fragrance nerd like this guy is, I wanna know what's in here. I wanna know what's making it tick sort of thing. Now, I've been reading some comments. One thing that's very evident is that there are some musk components in here. There are some musky elements. There's definitely vanilla. There's a vanilla touch to it. And it definitely has a, like a, like a cake-like quality to it or iris or powderiness, honey. I just all of a sudden I detected a honey note in there. Um, so sexually charged. What I've discovered for me is that if you, so this would be a great, um, if you're going to a Christmas function that, you know, you are looking for a, uh, you know, someone to go home with, uh, this is it definitely, it, the, it walks a beautiful balance between the, the attraction component, so that vanilla, the, the cake-like quality that, mm, well, you know, you, you smell those sort of things in the air, it, it attracts you. But then on the flip side to it, there is a sass in there. There is something that is making it like, I'm just not sure. So it's not all sweetness and, and you know, <laughs> you know, cuteness. There is something in there that is, that there is, I don't know, it has a different turn to it. I, I, this is, and I, and I was trying to find it also, this is, without sounding inappropriate, this is, I want to make love to you fragrance, all right? So that's, that I think is its purpose. If you look at the video that was created, and I think the reason why I said don't look at the video is because that video makes it overtly sexual. And I don't think this is an overtly sexual fragrance. I think it's more of, uh, it, it definitely is a, a, a seductive, lure-like fragrance to it. One thing that I did notice, uh, I've been wearing it quite a bit. Um, men, so men in my, my family, we were very expressive. Whenever we meet, you know, any members of, of, of my family, we, there's always an embrace, there's a kiss on the cheek, and then there is a smell of the fragrance. It's, it's almost, it's weird, I know, but this is what happens. We embrace, we give each other a kiss, and then we're like, mm, I like your, per your perfume, or we make some sort of commentary on the perfume. Now, uh, my son, who's heavily into fragrance and is quite, so he likes oud fragrances, all a whole bunch of stuff, recoiled like it, I, like, like it was, I don't know, I don't know what, like he was smelling seven day old urine. It was like, bleh, he just freaked out. Um, and I'm like, you don't like it? He's like, what are you wearing? He's like, that, it does not smell good. And yet at that same function where we met, I had, three to four other women, I can't remember, but other women were actually commenting on my fragrance and they could smell it quite cleanly. There was a one uh, woman who's very shy as a person, very close friend of, of, of the family, very shy as a person because that's part of her culture. They're not very expressive necessarily. And she commented, which she would, I found this completely out of character, but she commented, she goes, I really like your perfume. You, you smell, you smell. Um, and I asked her like, what do you mean? And then she got shy. She said, you smell nice, you know? So there is something in here. There is some kind of lure component to it, which draws a person in, but be careful. I wouldn't blind buy this. Uh, uh, you would need to test on skin and see how it works. I think it's an exceptional perfume. Sandra loves this fragrance on me. Um, it is a very, it's a beautiful fragrance. So yeah, so I would, uh, they're the two that, so a little bit more on the animalic component, a little bit more with, um, yeah, if you go into a function where, you know, it's, there's a chance that you could meet somebody special, um, then, those are the two fragrances that I would recommend. Bada bing, boom, boom, last one. Okay, so I mentioned to you about this. Look at this beautiful thing. Look at that. Perfect panettone right there. Melbourneites, you need to get onto it. Onto it. Look at this glorious fragrance. Now, um, this, so this is panettone. Um, and it's one of the fragrances that Sandra, my wife, loves wearing. It's, it's literally, the moment the panettone comes out, and um, I start eating it. Sandra brings out panettone and starts wearing it. So this is her Christmas fragrance. I love wearing it also. This is what I was smelling before. 
What makes Panettone the most divine fragrance? So don't worry about the cake or don't worry about the, the, uh, the Christmas dessert. As a fragrance in, in and of itself, Panettone has this beautiful cake-like quality, oh, okay, now think of the cake, cake-like quality, a citrus component to it, but it does have these more, there are, there's florals in there, but there's a sweetness. It does have immortal. So the flower immortal has this beautiful balance between being floral, but also caramel-like in its construct. Anyway, this fragrance is divine. Have a look at this image here. So we did a meetup at the Oligarch store where we based, where Kevin invited everyone in Melbourne to come along, bring your favorite fragrance, and we'll talk about it. This young lady, she actually um, purchased Panettone. And, and I love that she was explaining, she goes, I don't know if you guys know that there's an Italian cake that is at Christmas time. I, 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 I remember being there going, yep, I know. Um, anyway, she loves, well, she loves this fragrance. So it gives you an idea that, yes, it could be a festive kind of fragrance, but it's an all year round. If you love gourmand style fragrance, Panettone is incredible and panettone as a cake is divine. It's pure magic. I had to say for panettone, come on. There it is. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, I want to wish you all an awesome, whether you celebrate Christmas or you don't, I want to wish you guys all peace in your life, joy around you, peace with you and your families. I know that sometimes families can be complex. <laughs> happens everywhere. But, uh, and I think of myself, I know that it's, it's where I find my most joy, my most peace. Sometimes the most frustrating, I love my family. Uh, but you know, sometimes it's family, you know how it is. But anyway, bottom line is, I'm wishing you guys all uh, well over these coming uh, days and I'm hoping that everybody is well too. Anyway, I don't know how to end that, but thank you. I love you guys. Ooh, I love you guys. And I'll see you guys all in the next month of talk.